Porto Coediana Stars. Remember, the two clubs are in action uh, tomorrow in uh, Continental Football uh, Competition. We also have something from Betway. Then later this evening, the action is on. Live commentary will be live here on Love 99.5 FM. Barcelona coming up against Chelsea at the Stanford Bridge. The other match of the evening, Bayern Munich and Besiktas will bring you all here on your superstation, Love 99.5 FM. <laughs> All right, so let's start uh, with stories from the camp of Kumasiya Santi Kotoko. And um, the players have had their traveling allowance upped um, from $300 to $400 ahead of uh, tomorrow's Cup Confederations Cup second leg against Kara Brazzaville. Uh, the team arrived in Congo um, on Monday evening. And according to the club's Twitter, uh, Twitter handle, Executive Board Chairman uh, Dr. Kwame Che paid allowances after breakfast today. Now, this is a huge financial motivation for the players to punch above their weight to advance to the next round of the competition. Kotoko, remember, managed just a slim one zero win in the first leg but coach Steve Pollack says they will do all they can to qualify for the next round of the competition well you know um, again the way they supported us in the first game was excellent it's probably the best that I've heard and, and I know they won't be here um, in person but I know that everybody who's there the Kotoko family will be there spiritually but not only to the Kotoko fans because they are so important but also to the Ghanaians because we're representing Ghana Ghana as as we are in our stars are so I wish them all the best also in their game but to all the Guardians please be with us and by God's grace we'll bring the result back that we need to ok so that's uh, coach Steve Pollack and Eric Dunkor the defender uh, is also optimistic of the team's chances of qualification I'll say uh, it's not going to be easy for us but uh, we're going about looking at the caliber of players that we have we have much experience and we are going to fight for the badge that we win in our hearts so we know it's going, not going to be easy, but we want to fight hard and I know everything will be okay for us. Have you saw the Congolese team when you played against them uh, two Sundays ago? How difficult an opposition do you think they can be? I would, I would say uh, it should be a, a different ball game altogether because they had their intentions to defend the players on the counter attack. But we've seen uh, them individually, we've seen them as a team. I know uh, with a strategy as a coach who give us uh, with it. I know it's going to work for us and uh, we're going to do well. Uh, I want to assure that uh, coming back with victory and qualification. All right, so that's Eric Dunkel, the promise of qualification now. I mean, a related development. Reports you are gathering indicate that Kotoko has had everything going their way ever since they arrived yesterday night. No intimidation from any quarters. Uh, they had it smooth sailing because Ghana's ambassador, uh, indeed, His Excellency Atabuafo, um, and his representatives were at the airport to welcome them. And the advance party that um, uh, took the lead before the team itself got there had done all the groundworks. And so the Kotoko team are now lodging at the Olympic Palace Hotel. Now, here's a plush hotel there. And everything seems to be moving on very well for us, uh, for, for the team. Now, um, we had wanted to cross over and speak to our colleague, Countryman Songo. He is with the team. But unfortunately, we are having problems with the lines. But if we do get him before the end of the show, we'll definitely call him for him to give us um, a brief about what is happening. But we hear that earlier this morning, uh, His Excellency Atabuafu hosted a team to breakfast at his, at his residence. And so I'm happy to hear that Kotoko are having it cool there in Congo. Now, in other stories, Libyan side Al Tahidi uh, have finally agreed to play Ghanaian champions Adriana Stars in the second leg of the CAF Champions League after rejecting Domain Hinkro as Wednesday's venue for the game. An intervention by the GFA um, with full assurances of a police motorcade on their journey from Kumasi to Doma and back ensure the Libyan reverse their threat of not playing the match. The team uh, will um, is currently on their way to uh, from Sunyani to Doma to uh, go and train on the Nanajman Bidu do other Najman Bedou Park uh, pitch before, uh, according to CAF regulations. Now the team will then leave Doma back to Sunyani immediately after the training session from where they will travel back to Doma on Wednesday to play the game. Now the Libyan had threatened not to play the match in the Brown Half region, citing the road travelling distance from Kumasi to Doma for more than for being more than 200 kilometres, violating CAF regulations. Me, but, but, um, well, uh, after speaking to after Ghana FA's international relations officer Alex uh, Sante and the regional uh, sports um, uh, press, uh, sports chairman here, the regional football association sports chairman of City too, uh, the two were able to convince the Libyans to make the trip to Sunyani. Now, a police dispatch rider and a bus will take the Alta Tahadi team to Kumasi after the game, immediately after the game from where they will be flown to Accra by African World Airlines so that they connect to Libya or Tripoli on Thursday morning at 11.30 a.m. Now, meanwhile, Chief Executive Officer of Adriana Stars Football Club, Albert Komi, says his team has done everything, everything possible to make the Libyans feel at home. We have no plan 
to frustrate them. But they cannot frustrate us too. We want the media to take note of that. So that whatever allegations they are making, you have answers for them. You can cross check. Because should they never go to where they are lodging without their invitation, what do you think they will say? Per what they are doing, your judgment will, will be as good as mine. We've done our best to make sure so at least we have nothing against it. Omo Lodi Okumasi. Sanka Omo Pache is Omo Lodi Okumasi. You've been there, you've been there, and you've been there. You've been there, you've been there. And so far, this is what has happened. All right, so Albert's coming there for you. He also touched on preparations for the match, saying that all has gone well with his team. It's been good when we landed uh, last Monday. Two of them were not too good. We took them to the airport clinic, and I think it's a flight, a flight uh, scary or whatever they called it. They were discharged, and they've joined the team since then. So I'll tell you that all the team players are well conditioned, and they are focused. As I speak to you now, they went to camp, and they'll continue be, to be in camp till we play the match. So. All right, so Albert coming there for you now on his part. You see, Fabu Bakar, who is coach of the team, has assured fans of working on the psyche of his boys and mapping out a good strategy to ensure qualification. We have to be careful with late tactics, so many stimulations, trying to make you annoying and all that. So we've done that, and I want them to take their mind out of that. And if we win the ball and we are possessing the ball for a certain time, we must make good use of the possession. Other than that, if we continue to possess and waste the time, they are not leading. So we are not thinking about home or away. It's about a competition that is at the knockout stage. So we have work on that, and I believe as the day goes by, we will continue working on this. Finally, coach, this is not a game for Ebiana or for Doma people alone. It's a game for Ghanaians. Um, what assurances would you be giving us? Well, uh, even the first leg, I knew a lot of people played for us. They supported us. And I believe this time is going to be more than what we've seen the other time. We had a lot of calls from people wishing us all the best and all that. And uh, I hope and I believe that with what we've done so far, I can assure that God willing, will be tactically disciplined, will be mentally tough, and will carry the day. Now, you see, also spoke about the current condition of attacker Aya Mohammed, who missed the first leg in Cairo 10 days ago. Oh, it's now okay. Yaya was not fully fit. He was having some injuries when we camped in Sunyani. In one of the uh, G8 matches he played against Kotoko, he played. And then after that, he had some knocks. And then he's now okay. He started training. So we are looking forward to the subsequent matches. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's do something more on football. And Malmo FF, who um, are, are reported to be on the verge of sacking Ghana's Kisley, um, Kisley say, uh, whether, um, whether he's convicted of rape charges or not. Now, the Swedish giants will wield their disciplinary acts after the 22-year-old was accused of having multiple sex with minors in the European country. Uh, Kisley Safo. Uh, Safo is the club's most expensive signing after signing a five-year contract last summer, but appears to have dragged his image in the mud. And the Malmo, Malmo FF chairman Hakan Jepsen has given the clearest indication the club's association with African may well be over. Now, according to investigators, all crimes that a player is now suspected of were committed this year, not last year, as been reported earlier. Now, Betway Ghana has opened its ultra-modern concept store in Kumasi in the Ashanti region. The concept store, uh, store which is located at the Nyantechua Plaza along the main Amikom Road, will provide players with a convenient and safe environment where they can visit and view matches and place bets. The leading online sports betting company, which has also been operating in Ghana since June 2016, aims at taking the Betway experience to a wider audience by adding the Kumasi concept store to its new, uh, to its network of branches. Speaking to the media, country manager operations Magnus Rex Dankwa Jr. says the company is set to organize a community soccer competition for the youth to unearth talents in Kumasi as well as put together an Easter Gala competition and soccer talent search for the youth in Kumasi. The organization of such events, according to Rex Dankwa Jr., is the company's way of giving back to society. So we came to organize community soccer for the youth as well. We did it at uh, David Akam Park, where it's a sex aside game. You win, you get your cash ready handed to you. There's no go and come back for your check or any instance like that.
So this year as well, we're going to do our Easter Gala. From the Easter Gala, we have the World Cup. We have something for Kumasi as well during the World Cup. After the World Cup, we are coming again with a talent search that we did with Steve Napier last year. We did with Steve Napier, a whole lot of well-known Ghanaian coaches. We'll be doing that as well. And this time, last year we did it in four regions. This time we'll be expanding to six more regions. So then everybody in the country gets a feel of what we are trying to do for the youth and in football as well. Okay, so Magnus Rex Danqua Jr. is um, country manager of operations for Betway. Um, for Betway. Now, let's turn our attention to some international stories. Manchester in Barcelona! And the big game is coming up this evening at Stamford Bridge in London, where Chelsea are playing against Barcelona. And um, it's going to be the pick of the evening. And the other game will be uh, Bayern Munich playing at home at the Allianz Arena against the Schichters. But Antonio Conte um, has admitted his Chelsea players are preparing to suffer against Barcelona. And he describes Lionel Messi as the best player in the world. The Premier League champions host the Spanish Giants at Stamford Bridge in the first leg of the Champions League last 16 tie later tonight. We are talking about uh, the best player in the world and uh, Messi has the capacity to solve the situation and uh, to, to create a chance when uh, you, you are not seeing the chance to, to score. And uh, this means that uh, this, uh, this player, we are talking about a, a fantastic player. For sure we have to pay great attention, but not only to Messi, but Suarez is a, a fantastic striker. The whole team is very dangerous. In this case, I think that we have to work uh, as a team to try to stop Barcelona. All right, so they have to work as a team to stop Barcelona. But he says that, look, um, ever since uh, that draw was made and uh, he realized that we were playing against Barcelona, he's lost sleep. Yeah, he's, he's not been able to sleep so well. Uh, that is um, coach Antonio Conte. After the game uh, in uh, FA Cup, and uh, I must be honest, and uh, it was a bit difficult to, to, to sleep. Uh, to sleep, yeah, to sleep well, but not a lot. Because when, uh, when uh, you have to play this, uh, this type of game, you have to prepare. You have to prepare uh, everything. You have to prepare uh, big things, but you have to prepare the details because the details uh, a lot of time move, move the result. Yeah, I think that uh, we have an idea, we have a plan in our heads. Yeah, I think, I think that in this, uh, in this moment, in this specific moment, for us, it's very important. All right, so even from the way the coach is speaking, Chelsea, that Chelsea, they, they, they realize themselves that, that um, they have a big game at hand tonight and that they have to do all they can. Yes, he says that he's lost sleep because of Barca. Now, let's hear from um, Eden Hazard, who plays for Chelsea, and he has been boasting about the capabilities of, the t of his team to topple Barca later tonight. I think all of the game they are difficult, but uh, when you play Champions League, it's more than difficult because you play against the, the best team in Europe. And uh, I think this season, Barca is one of the best in the world. So, yeah, it's going to be a good game. I hope for Chelsea, we will give everything, both games, here and her way. So, we will see. What, what Chelsea needs to do and what you need to do to overcome that impressive midfield that Barcelona has got, and especially. What does it mean for you to face Leo once again? First of all, we need to defend as a team, because if we don't defend against Barca, we are in trouble. So we need to, to defend all together and uh, try to, to play all football. And then to play against Messi is always good. I did once in the World Cup against Argentina. We lost the game, so I hope it's going to be, it's going to be different. All right, so um, that was it from Eddie Hazard there for you. Now, Olivier Giroud has revealed why he has um, ended his five and a half years stay at Arsenal to join Chelsea. The French striker moved to Stamford Bridge in an £18 million transfer. And the 31-year-old reveals he put pressure on a Ghana's boss, Asun Wenger, to sanction a deal so he could, pay, he could play regular football and guarantee a place in the French team at the 2016 World Cup. And meanwhile, chairman David Sharp uh, says Wigan will work with the Football Association and police to review the pitch invasion after the attack after their win over Manchester City uh, in the FA Cup yesterday. Some supporters ripped out advertising boards and threw themselves uh, towards the police. The FA was steady. Uh, the referees report and review available footage. And finally, former Chelsea forward Didier Drogba's 17-year-old son, Isaac, has joined French League One club Gion Gamp. Uh, Isaac Drogba, who, like his father, plays as a striker, has previously played for Chelsea's academy. He joins Gion Gamp 16 years after his father signed for the club in an £80,000 move from Le Mans. Didier Drogba, who scored 24 goals in 50 appearances for Gion Gamp, posted on Instagram, 
couldn't be more proud of you, Isaac. And two of his former teammates were also there to reply. Frank Lampard wrote, Congratulations. I remember Isaac as a small, polite boy, now a man. And ex Blues captain John Terry also wrote, Can't believe how big he is, mate. Congratulations. All right, so that's how we end the show this afternoon. And um, let's see what's on board for Drive Talk um, later. Let's say a big thank you even before that to Prestige Capital, yes, and also to Rockman uh, uh, Pakum, and then also to Tabia um, Herbal Mixture. Now, later on Drive Talk, uh, okay, it is directed to DJ Rubin. So it says, Hi, Rubin. Uh, since I'm reading, I can say, Hi, Adela. Um, I trust the judgment of your listeners, and I know they will be objective with my issue. My wife often comes home on her own after work. Yesterday, she came in a Porsche car. I'm contemplating on asking who dropped her, but I'm afraid she will take offense to that. Why should she take offense? Ask her who brought her. It's as simple as that. I mean, she's your wife, and you demand to know. I think there's nothing wrong with that, because if she had seen you, or if she had seen a lady drop you, the first question she should have asked was, who was that? And so, I don't think anything is wrong with that. If you're a husband, to find out from your wife who dropped her at home, especially if it is a Porsche car, and you don't have a Porsche car, you have to watch out. Mm, Pack up your files in the office, turn off the computers, and step into a fun.